as they can Turn off the screen, go climb a tree, get dirt on their hands I believe the they can dance nobody gets a second chance to make you both
and is all about, both invisible and visible, one presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am an individualized expression of God. I am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. That is such a powerful statement. I hope that many of you are getting to the point in your personal and spiritual development that you are telling yourselves on a regular basis, I am an individualized expression of God. Because that's who you truly are. And that's the whole, that's the bottom line, folks. That is the bottom line. When you get that and live your life that way, <coughs> All things are working together for your highest good. And you know it. So the reason that we didn't have somebody come up and read the daily word today is because it was meant for me to read it. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you, I do read these in advance. And when I read it, I thought, gee, I wonder who's going to read that. And then, and then, Carol, our wonderful platform assistant, that we did not recognize this morning, Ms. Carol Shepard. And Carol suggested that I read it, and I went, yep. Because the word today is wholeness. And the affirmation is, wholeness is my nature and the truth <coughs> of my life. I think every one of us should say that. So I'll repeat it again, pay attention. Wholeness is my nature and the truth of my life. So together. Wholeness is my nature and the truth of my life. Because it's not just me, it's each one of us. I see myself whole complete, and as a living expression of God. My thoughts fill my consciousness with divine ideas of wholeness. My words affirm wholeness. Through my actions, I bless the life energy in my body with the right balance of exercise, rest, and nutrition. I live from my wholeness even if I experience illness. I may receive treatment, but I do not consider myself weak or diseased. I move through every health challenge with faith and grace, trusting this experience has come to pass. I remember wherever I am, whatever may be happening, divine life is always seeking to express through me. To restore my awareness of wholeness, which is and will always be my true spiritual state of being. And the Bible verse for today's daily word comes from Luke 11, verse 34. Your eye is the lamp of your body. Your whole body is, if your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But if it is not healthy, your body is full of darkness. And we're not talking about 
these eyes that we see with. We are talking about the eyes of our, of our heart, of our spirit, of our soul. And if we see life, if we see beyond the experiences that life often presents us that are less than ideal, if we can see beyond those experiences to the truth that we are individualized expressions of God, that we are whole and perfect just the way we are, just because you see someone who was born with, with a, a, a debilitating illness or develops a debilitating illness does not mean they are not whole and perfect. They are. Just as you are. Every time, all the time. We just need to know that about ourselves. And last Sunday, Many of us participated in our burning bowl ceremony. Now, fire represents purification and renewal. And so what we did last week is, is we took some time to look into ourselves. And we said, hmm, there's a few things in there that are not really serving me. You know, maybe you're like I used to be, and I went through a really hard time of not considering myself as quote unquote worthy. And maybe you're, or maybe you're, just think you're, you're not good at something or not good enough to do something that you have always dreamed of doing. And if any, any of those kinds of thoughts ever entered your mind, and I know they have, you're not kidding me, because I've had them too. But it, when those kinds of thoughts enter your mind, those are the thoughts that do not serve us well. So the burning bowl ceremony gives us the opportunity to take those thoughts, the not worthy, the not good enough, the I can't, write them on a piece of paper and then give them to the flame. Purify them. Get rid of them in our consciousness. But you know what? They're sneaky little lovers. <laughs> and as much as we might go through a burning bowl ceremony, and we do it annually, they're going to come back at the most inopportune times. But then, we have the opportunity to recognize them and say, oh, I've met you before. And I remember casting you in the fire. And now you bet you're trying to come back? Nope, no thank you. And so we give it up again. This is not, this is not a one and done situation, folks. We get the opportunity to live our lives on a daily basis, just like everybody else. Just because we're believe, we believe in unity philosophies and principles doesn't mean that life doesn't throw some da-ah at us. The difference is we have tools. We have tools that help us handle the less than wonderful stuff way better than the average person. So, during this past week, I hope you've been taking time every day to connect to that Christ self, that presence and power that lives in, through, and as you. Because that's the practice that makes all of the other practices work. Because the more time that we spend connecting with our higher self, the easier it becomes. And when we get, so when we get to the point that we practice and practice and practice and practice, then when some of the, one of those really less than wonderful opportunities presents themselves to us, we're in a much better position to deal with it 
actively. To look at someone who might be screaming at you or having a really bad day and recognize that that person is a good person who's having a really bad day. And that's not always easy to do. So we're going to continue throughout this 2024 year to conquer and reburn those less than wonderful thoughts. And today, we're going to take another step. This is called White Stone Sunday, and you received one of these little white stones when you came in. Now, I don't know if we have had the pencils out or if you have a pen in your purse or pocket. If you do, if, it's, if you're writing with a pen, you're going to write on the rough side of the stone. If you have a pencil or a magic marker and want to write on the smooth side of the stone, that'll work just as well. So we're, our meditation today is going to be extended. So we're going to be, we're going to be talking about the purpose of this white stone ceremony first. And then when we get into this, the meditation part, you're going to be listening. You're going to be listening for that still, small voice that may whisper to you a word or, or a short phrase that is going to be your talisman of sorts for this year. So you can keep this white stone with you. And you can hold on to it and remember the word that Spirit has given you today. And if you don't get a word today, it's okay. It's okay. Because the way I look at it is if you don't receive a word from Spirit today, then that Spirit's reminding you that Perhaps you need to spend a little more time together. And so if you spend a little more time on a daily basis, it can be two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, however much time you have. And just sit and it's not, it's not a thinking thing. It's a feeling thing. It's just allowing love, understanding, whatever it is to fill your consciousness, fill your heart, and breathe. Because sometimes we just get so wrapped up in the stuff that's going on out here that we forget how wonderfully, beautifully, it can remain in here, right? So, when our way show Jesus was actually teaching in the world, there was a symbolic custom that was used when someone was either released from prison or released from enslavement. And this custom was that they would be given a white stone. So then if they were walking down the road and perhaps someone saw them and knew them as an enslaved person or knew them as a prisoner and thought, oh my gosh, this person has escaped from prison. They don't, they don't belong out here on the street. All that person had to do was show them their white stone to show that they had been released. So for you today, this is your release. Because I know there are people who are still keeping themselves in prison. Imprisoning themselves with words and beliefs that don't serve them. It might be the same words you just found on, on the, in the burning bowl last week. And it's still not quite on. But 
Revelation 2, verse 17, tells us this. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what Spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who conquers, I will give some hidden manna, and I will give a white stone. And on the white stone is written a new name that no one knows except the one who receives it. Now the Apostle John isn't talking about the physical ears on our head. And churches aren't buildings like the ones, like what we're seated in today. The Metaphysical Bible Dictionary tells us the word church is derived from a Greek word meaning the Lord's house. And our individual consciousness is our own Lord's house. And within this house, there are groups of ideas or thought centers. And so John is talking about listening to those thought centers inside our own house and listening not with our ears, but with our hearts, with our soul, with our feelings. We listen for that still, small voice that only whispers. It's never going to shout at us. We have to pay attention. And it may not even be in words. It may be that you're, walk, you're driving down the road and you see a billboard and it like, speaks to you. Or it may be that you pick up a book in the, in the book corner over here and you just flip a page open and you read exactly what you needed to hear. There is, Spirit doesn't communicate with us always in the ways that we expect. And so we have to pay attention, not just to words, not just to sounds, but to feelings. We will be given, the, me the message comes, the words come, the feelings come, we just have to listen. So how do we allow our consciousness to grow and develop to a higher level so that we really get those messages? How do we develop this ability to listen with our hearts? Through prayer and meditation. <laughs> it's just, and it, there, you don't have to have a special location. You don't have to have a special time. You can, you can pray and meditate at a stoplight, just don't take too long. <laughs> but prayer and meditation on a regular basis, when you find yourself getting upset about something, when something is really bugging you, guess what you might want to do? You might want to just take a moment Quiet yourself. Go through that process of relaxing your body, relaxing your mind, and say, and I like to speak to spirit at the beginning of my prayer and meditation. You know, whether whether you use the word God or divine spirit or whatever, whatever connection word you want. I mean, Jesus used Abba, which was Father. So it doesn't matter what word you use, but when you just realize that you're in a position where you're not the best you that you can be, that's the time that you can just take that moment right there to say, okay, 
Spirit, I need help. I need guidance. I don't know what I'm doing here, but you do. This energy, this presence, this power that lives in, through, and as each one of us, it's not, it is not just in each one of us. It is all around us. It can, it can, it can do all things. And so when we say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, that just means that we're recognizing as an individualized expression of God, as an individualized expression of the one presence and power, it can do through me what I cannot possibly do for myself. Does that make sense? So, we say no to thoughts that are telling us that we're not good enough, we're unworthy or whatever. And we say yes to the hidden mind. Because it says, everyone who, to everyone who conquers, I will give some hidden man. Man, man, or you say. We are first told to conquer. In other words, to see beyond appearances. Because when we are in a less than wonderful situation, the training that we received, probably the training we received as a child and what we taught ourselves as a, long, as a young person, or even if you think of back to the origin, origination of humankind, we were trained in fight or flight. So that's what we tend to want to do. We tend to want to either run or we want to duke it out. However, when we have been practicing prayer and meditation on a regular basis, we can get to the point where we can say, you know what, I am divinely human and humanly divine, and therefore, I don't have to run or do it out. I can say, this person's having a bad day, and I'm okay with that. And allow them to be, deal with what they're dealing with. I mean, it doesn't mean you have to put up with being abused. It doesn't mean you have to be forgive them. You don't have to say, you know, oh, that's fine, you're okay. No. You can speak your truth that I'm not comfortable with you speaking to me that way or you treating me that way. You can acknowledge, in fact, I want you to acknowledge your feelings. But it's your feelings that you're acknowledging. You're not saying, you did this and therefore I am that. No. I'm feeling this way. And consequently, I'm going to walk away now. It's what I need to do for me. You're not judging and blaming them. You're taking responsibility for your own self. So, this hidden mana isn't necessarily visible to the physical world, but it's a, a, a source of energy, it's a source of sustenance that we receive from that higher level of beingness that lives in, through, and as each one of us. And what we, it, Revelations 2.17 goes on to say, And I will give a white stone. And on the white stone is written a new name that no one knows except the one who receives it. Now white, metaphysically, represents joy, victory, and purification. So in this white stone, our purified state of consciousness is where we learn our new name, our word that is for us to realize in this new year that we just recently entered. So we realize the newness of the year, we realize the newness of our higher consciousness, 
And we write the word that represents it for us individually on the stone. And if you think about it, the man who became Paul was originally known as Saul. The man who became Abraham was originally known as Abram. His wife, Sarah, was originally known as Sarai. So a name change always signifies a growth in consciousness. So even if you don't understand why the word that you're hearing or feeling or wanting, your pen is wanting to write down, even if you say, oh, that's a weird word, it's okay. Spirit will identify the word and as time goes on, you will know why that word was chosen for you. So, and along with these words, you've also received with your bulletin this little piece of paper and this envelope. Now, this, a single word, you may receive more than just a single word. And so, when you're, we're going to spend, we're going to spend a little more time in meditation today than we normally do. And so, when we when we go into our meditation, yes, I want you to relax. Yes, I want you to, you know, set yourself into that state. But feel comfortable with either opening or closing your eyes as you need to during the meditation, because you're possibly going to want to write down a word or b you may feel like you maybe you have questions that you know why is this happening in my life ask questions there is a presence and power that has the answers you may feel like there is something speaking to you through you that you need to write down what that voice is saying write it down these are the kinds of things that can happen during the during your meditation. And you may even get to the point where you want to keep a journal with you when you meditate. I mean, that's honestly, that's kind of how um, Neil Donald Walsh ended up writing Conversations with God, which became a global bestseller and made him a multimillionaire. So maybe you're next. <laughs> So, what we're going to do is we're going to move into meditation. And we have um, Nancy Motrick and Linda Ballard, who are both going to serve us today with, with Marina being out. We're going to have, and I think this is actually kind of perfect. I love the way the universe works, it's just so cool. We're going to be using ancient music to help us through this ancient process. And so, let's begin by putting ourselves into a relaxing position. Just let, let your muscles relax. Let your head move over. Get into a comfortable position. You can place your hands in your lap, you can hold your pen, you can do whatever you want to do that makes you feel comfortable. So let's take a few deep breaths. Opening ourselves to a shift in our consciousness. Opening ourselves to the unlimited possibilities this new year can bring to us. Take a moment and consciously invite spirit, that presence and power, living in, through, and as you, more fully into your heart and mind. Divine self in you to come through. 
Pelo. Copain. Give yourself permission to know a new quality, a new name that is being given to you.
year 2024. The name or word we've been given or will be given has been or will be written on our white stones. And with these words, we declare our intention. Our intention is not words that we speak. It is a force that exists in the universe as an invisible field of energy. Our intention is connected to source. And that invisible field of energy lives through us, has us, around us, surrounds us all the time. It is always available in physical and non-physical ways. That energy, that divine intention never makes a mistake. It allows nothing but an oak tree to come from an acorn. An apple blossom will never become a peach. And a tulip bulb will always produce a tulip and never a rose. When we fully understand and put our faith in this truth, in this power, in this presence that is perfect, we are strengthened. And that is why it's so important for us to connect regularly with that omnipresent, all-powerful energy on a regular basis. The more we connect with it, the more it will connect with us in our most stressful, challenging situations. So we close this precious time together by singing and praying the Lord's Prayer.
So let's take our gifts in our hands, and on the back of the envelope, you will see our saying that we share together as we give from our hearts. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I give joyfully and easily, for the universe is my source and abundance is my nature.
January birthdays. Wade Leonard had his on the 1st of January. Mike Gallant had his the very next day on January 2nd. And we declared all kinds of talents we have here. And Beverly Wartman's is coming in January on the 17th. Two days later on the 19th. Kathy Morrissey's is January 24th. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. Jazz hand and many more. Wherever we are, 